and welcome to class. Today we are doing a yoga flow to feel our emotions um, and maybe we can even release them. Uh, but in order to release an emotion, you have to first feel it. And um, we have a tendency to label emotions as good or bad. Uh, we think happiness and joy, they're the good ones. And then anger, frustration, sadness are the bad ones. But the truth is there are no good or bad emotions. They're all just emotions and they're all part of the human human experience so it's really important to just feel them all and let them be what they are um, i hope that the sound is okay i had to film this on my phone because my camera gave out so let's try this hopefully the noise isn't too distracting i know the mic is a little different on the phone than on the when you plug it into the camera but either way um welcome and um, grab some blocks if you know that you like practicing with them. You may also want to use a bolster. We are going to finish off in pigeon pose today. So if you know that you like to prop yourself up, feel free to grab um, anything that you might need. And we will get started on our backs. So just make your way onto your back. Knees are bent and they can knock together. Your feet can be slightly wider than hip distance and you can just place one hand on the belly, one hand on your chest or keep both hands by your side, whatever feels more intuitive for you today. You can close down your eyes here if that feels good. And just feel your body melting into the floor here. Try to let go of anything that happened before you came to your mat today and let go of anything happening after and just be here now in this moment. Feel your body breathing. Feel the soles of your feet ground down, the back of your hips, your sacrum your back and shoulder blades. Just feel it all melt into the mat here. The back of your head, back of your arms. And no matter what you're going through right now, if you only take one thing away from this class today, I want it to be that it's okay to feel all of your emotions. So whether that is sadness or anger, frustration, disappointment, or perhaps it's joy, happiness, calmness, togetherness. Whatever emotions come up for you throughout this practice, I invite you to just let them be there. Just notice them, take a breath, and then with the exhale, just release them. We'll work into our hips a lot today, and sometimes that can cause a lot of emotions coming up, and it's okay a safe space on your mat. So just try to breathe into whatever comes up. And just let it be what it is. It's not good, it's not bad, it just is. When you're ready, slowly blink open your eyes and you can take a little stretch here if you'd like. Maybe wiggle the hips a bit back and forth. Oh. <sighs> now straighten your left leg and you may be here or you may be here. Either way, it doesn't matter, all good. Start just circling your ankle in one direction. Try to really feel your ankle and your foot here. Switch directions. Just pay attention to perhaps your toes, perhaps focus on one toe, see what it's doing. And now flex and point your foot. Sometimes just paying attention to a body part that we usually don't pay attention to can help us to get really present and it can be really grounding. 
Beautiful. Lower that leg down and then switch. So straighten the right leg and just do some ankle circles here. And again, feel free to focus on your toes or your heel or and switch directions. And then flex and point, flex and point, flex and point. Beautiful. Lower that foot down. Flex your left ankle, place it on top of that right knee. And you can just do a little side to side wiggles here. You can stay here or point that right, point your right toes and just start bouncing a little playfully back and forth here, getting into that left outer hip. Beautiful. You can stay here or you can interlace your fingers behind that right thigh. Wiggle a little side to side here. You can stay still, whatever feels good to you. So this is a supine pigeon. This is a good alternative if regular pigeon ever feels too intense. I like doing these in the morning or in the evening or just any time throughout the day, really. Beautiful. And let's switch. So flex your right ankle, place it on top of that left knee. Wiggle a little side to side here. And you can stay here or point the left toes and just start bouncing a little playfully. Careful here not to go too, too intense, but just you want to feel a stretch here through the outer right hip. Beautiful. You can stay here or interlace your fingers behind that left thigh. You can push that right thigh away with your elbow. Wiggle a little back and forth, just feeling into your hips here. Just getting a little bit of blood flow and nice little stretch here. Beautiful. And release. You can wiggle the hips out a bit. <laughs> and let's come to one side and make our way up into a tabletop position. Hands underneath shoulders, hips underneath the, or um, knees underneath the hips. We'll start off with just some wrist push-ups to warm up our wrist a little bit. So just lifting the heel of the hand. So even though this is a hips class, I like to always warm up the, hip, warm up the wrists because if we do planks and just down dogs and things like that, it can feel really good to, to just have a little bit of uh, mobility worked up through the, through the wrists. Two more. Ooh, ah. <laughs> Two. Beautiful. Now, bring your right hand, uh, right fingers to face your knees. And you can stay here with one hand if this is really intense for you. If you want, you can do two hands at the same time. If you're doing one, um, I will tell you when to switch. You can rock a little back and forth here or stay still, perhaps a little side to side. Just This is really intense, so be careful here with your wrists. You want to feel an intense stretch, but no pain. If you're doing one hand at a time, go ahead and switch. Good. Intense stretch in the forearms here. Beautiful, and release, shake that out. Come back into tabletop, flex your right foot, and just start doing big hip circles here, one direction. And switch directions. You might hear a lot of cracking and popping. It is all good as long as there's no pain. And other leg, flex that foot, keep the knee in a 90 degree angle. Ooh, lots of popping. <laughs> <laughs> and switch directions. Beautiful. Place that knee down. And whenever you're in tabletop, really push the floor away. So you don't want to be here, right? You want to push the floor away. On an inhale, arch your spine, 
sit bones come up, belly drops, chest comes through. Imagine that you're pulling the mat back with your hands. Look up, exhale, curl under. Inhale, arch. Exhale, curl under. Like an angry cat. Inhale. And exhale. Beautiful. One more just like that. Beautiful. Now walk your hands forward. Come into a puppy pose. You can place your forehead down or your chest and your chin. Depends on how you're feeling today. Stay here for three breaths. Feel a nice stretch in your shoulders. Feel that heart opening. And you want this to feel like a good stretch, but it shouldn't be too overwhelming. But just see if anything comes up for you here. Maybe feeling of excitement, or maybe feelings of anger, whatever it is, just feel it. Let it be there. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, release the emotion. Soften into it. Just let it be there. Just let it go. Beautiful. Walk your hands back. You can take a little wiggle here. Walk your hands about a hand's distance forward. Curl the toes under. Lift the knees and push back into downward facing dog. can pedal out your feet, keep that spine really long. You can bend your knees as much as you need to. Good. On an inhale, lift your right leg up and back. And on an exhale, step it almost in between your, your hands. And you'll end up in this 90 degree angle with your legs. Tuck your back toes under, or you can keep them untucked. You can see what feels better. Tuck your pelvis under, interlace your fingers, place them on top of that right thigh, push into the thigh, and at the same time, tuck your chin into your chest and feel this nice stretch here in the front of your psoas and hip flexors, front of your hips. Breathe here. Your psoas is one of those muscles that run, they run deep within the body and it's a muscle that connects your upper and lower body. So it attaches at your spine and then it goes all the way down and attaches at your, your um, thigh bone. And the psoas is one of those muscles that will get really tight if you are stressed, it's part of your fight or flight response. So this can feel quite intense. <sighs> Beautiful. Untuck your toes. Bring that front foot forward just a tad. And if you need to pad that back knee, feel free to do so. So I just padded mine with an extra yoga mat. Uh, walk the front foot forward just a tad. And we'll take a low lunge here. Arms can come up. And as you exhale, shift the hips back, half split. You can keep your hands on blocks here through this whole movement. Inhale, low lunge. Feel that intense stretch at the top of your thigh and your hip flexors. And exhale, half split, beautiful. Beautiful. Now come forward into your lizard lunge. Hands can be on the floor or on blocks. You can also come down onto your forearms if that's comfortable. Just wiggle a little bit here. So this is really getting into our hips. So again, just notice your mind. 
Now tuck the back toes, lift that back knee off the floor and lower, lift and lower, lift, lower. Keep going here, getting a little bit more movement into our hips and especially that uh, front of your left hip. Beautiful, last one. And settle into your lizard a bit more. Try to keep your chest forward. You don't want to be too much here. Now bring that back heel in towards your butt. Getting some active flexibility here. Getting the hamstring to work. Three, two, one. Beautiful. You can stay here or if you'd like, bring that right hand back and see if you can grab hold of that left foot. You can, if you're here, that's fine. You can either stay there or use a strap. If you have your foot, really try to focus on letting your hips kind of sink down. Feel that intense stretch through the front of that back hip. You can move that right foot out to the side a bit to give you more space. Breathe here. Notice your mind. Notice how you feel. And slowly release. Don't slingshot that foot. Hands come down. Curl the back toes. Lift the knee up. And step that right foot back. Downward facing dog. Beautiful. Inhale, left leg comes up. And exhale, step it forward. Not quite in between your hands, but almost. You'll end up in this 90 degree angle with your legs. Tuck the back toes or keep them untucked. See what feels better. Tuck your pelvis under. Interlace your fingers. Place them on that front thigh. Push into the thigh as you tuck your chin into your chest. Feel the stretch in your right hip flexors and right psoas, the right top of the thigh. It can be quite intense, so just be here. Allow it to be uncomfortable. With every exhale, imagine that psoas just melting. All the tension is just disappearing. Walk your front foot out just a tad and come into your low lunge. You can stay with your hands on top of that thigh for extra stability or you can raise your arms overhead. Exhale, shift the hips back, half splits. And again, feel free to use your blocks here. You can use them through the whole movement. They make great support. So whatever you need, Do one more with your breath. And on this next one, bring your hands down to the mat on the inside of that left foot. You can use blocks here. Again, it would look like this. Gives you some more space. You can bring your forearms down, whatever feels good for you here. Tuck your toes under, lift that back knee. Down, up, down, up, down. Just getting a little extra movement here into our hips before we go into that dragon stretch. Beautiful. Wiggle around a bit. See how your body feels here. Just notice any sensations. You might feel it in your back hip here, in the front. 
You might also feel it in the inside of your left hip. Now bring that heel towards your butt. Active flexibility. Three, two, one. Beautiful. Feel free to move that left foot out a bit and you can kind of put it on a diagonal like this to give yourself more space. Reach around with that left arm and grab a hold of your back foot if that's available to you. Breathe here. You can also be here or you can use a strap or you can just stay in your lizard lunge. If you have your foot, let your hips sink down, feel that nice intense stretch through that right front hip. And again, just notice your mind here, what comes up for you. Do you get frustrated? Do you feel open? Do you feel sad, do you feel angry? Just let it be there. Beautiful, and slowly release. Place your hands back down, tuck your back toes, lift the knee, and step that left foot back, downward facing dog. Lower the knees and come to sit back in a child's pose. Just for a moment, you can wiggle a little side to side here. If this is very uncomfortable for you, you can pay, place a bolster or block or something underneath your hips. You can also place something in front of your, um, underneath your forehead if your forehead doesn't touch the mat, just to make it more restorative. Beautiful. Rise up. Tuck the toes, lift the knees, downward facing dog. Take a big inhale and on an exhale, walk to the front of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift, back bend through the chest. And exhale, fold. Keep a bend in your knees here. If this is too much, you can keep blocks underneath your hands here. Shake your head no, shake your head yes. Option to grab hold of your elbows and perhaps sway a little side to side, just nice and easy here. Beautiful. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, fold. Inhale and bend your knees. Come all the way up, arms overhead, look up. Exhale, arms by your side, beautiful. Inhale, arms up, look up. Exhale, hinge from the hips, fold forward. Keep a bend in those knees if needed. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step the right foot back, then the left. Inhale and plank. Exhale, drop the knees and drop all the way down to the floor. Inhale, baby cobra. Pull the mat back with your hands. Imagine that you're trying to pull your whole body forward. Feel the upper back engage. And as you exhale, push back into downward facing dog. We'll do that two more times. Take a big inhale. And as you exhale, walk to the front of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift as you get there. Exhale, fold. Inhale, bend the knees, come all the way up, arms overhead, look up. Exhale, arms by your side, beautiful. Inhale, arms up, look up. Exhale, hinge and fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, left foot back, then the right. Inhale and plank. Exhale, drop the knees, exhale, all the way down. Inhale, baby cobra, pull the mat back with your hands, feel that upper back engage. Exhale, downward facing dog. Beautiful. One more just like that. Option to take a full chaturanga if that's in your practice and up dog instead of baby cobra. Inhale, 
Exhale, come to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, arms by your side. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hinge and fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, right foot back, then the left. Inhale in plank. Exhale, drop the knees, drop the chest. Inhale, upward dog or baby cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg up and back. Exhale, step it forward. Inhale, rise up, low lunge. Stay here for three, for two, for one. On exhale, lower the hands back down, step the foot back. Perhaps take a three-legged dog and downward facing dog, beautiful. Be here for a breath. On your next inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale, step it forward. Inhale, rise up, low lunge, or high lunge, sorry. <laughs> Stay here for three, for two, and for one. Exhale, hands come down, step that left foot back. Take a three-legged dog, perhaps, and downward facing dog. Beautiful. Now we'll go into kind of a fun little sequence. So follow me. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, step it in between your hands. Lower the back knee. Pivot that shin so it's parallel. Sweep your body to the back of the mat. And come into a modified side plank. Lift that top leg. Reach that top arm really long, beautiful. Now from here, place that foot down, heel first, and then toes face the side of the mat, or front of the mat rather, come into a modified side angle. Forearm can rest on the thigh, or you can place it down like this. Inhale, back to that modified side plank. Beautiful, get really long, and exhale. Modified side angle. <laughs> One more just like that. And exhale, modified side angle. Now bring your hands down at the back of the mats. Pivot those back toes so that you're on them like this and then lift that left knee up. Take a three-legged dog and release it down. Beautiful, now we're facing the back of the mat. So we gotta do the other, other side so we can come back to, to the front of the mat. So inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale, step it in between your hands. Pivot your right leg and sweep your body around so that you now end up in a modified side plank at the front of the mat. Lift that top leg, reach the top arm long. Beautiful, and as you exhale, place that left foot down, heel first, toes pointing to the back of the mat, come into your modified side angle. Inhale, modified side plank. Exhale, side angle. Ooh. One more just like that. Inhale. And exhale. Beautiful. On your next inhale, both hands come down at the front of the mat, pivot that back foot so you're on the toes, lift your right knee off the mat, and come into a three-legged dog, lower the leg, and come into downward facing dog. Beautiful. Whew. All right. Next we have pigeon, so grab any props that you need. Inhale. Reach your right leg up and back. Exhale, place it down for pigeon. Now, I don't want you to feel this in your knee 
whatsoever. If you do, I want you to prop up as much as you need to, or you can even take it on your back instead. Okay, so no pinching, no sensation in the knee whatsoever. This should be in the hips, nowhere else. Whew. All right, so you can uh, place a block underneath your hip here. I like to, oh, and your shin can be either parallel to the front of the mat or you can keep it diagonal. Um, so I'm a little bit tighter in my hip, so I keep it diagonal. That feels much better for me, but you do whatever feels good for you. Again, no pinching in the knees. And I like to come onto my right hip a little bit first and then work on squaring off my hips. So take a moment here to set up this pose. We'll stay here for, for some time. So make sure that it's maybe not comfortable, but that it's uh, bearable, right? You don't want it to be so intense that you're just tensing up. You want to be able to relax into it. So find your pigeon. You can take some movement here. Take your time. There's no rush here. Take your time, set it up, make sure it feels challenging but doable and you can stay upright or perhaps you come down onto your forearms you can place a block underneath your forehead and rest it down or if it feels good you can come all the way down with your forehead to the mat now whatever you choose will stay here for about 10 deep breaths Pigeon pose is one of those deep hip openers that can release a lot of emotions at once. And it is very common to cry here. So if that is you, just know that that is completely normal. It's quite common actually. Be with yourself here. Be kind to yourself. Be gentle with yourself. Talk to yourself like you would a really good friend or family member. And any emotion that comes up here, just sit with it and be gentle with it. Just let it be there. Perhaps ask why it's there. And perhaps ask how, what you can do to help it release. One more deep breath. When you feel ready, you can start making your way up. Tense your fingertips. Take some spinal rolls here. You don't have to think too much about this movement. Just let your spine move, kind of like a wave. Last one. Beautiful. Place your hands down. Push into the floor. Lift that knee up. And push back into downward facing dog. Take any movement you need here. Pedaling out the feet, perhaps a child's pose. Perhaps you want to lay on your back for a moment. Whatever your body is asking for. And when you're ready, we'll do the other side. Inhale, left leg up and back. And exhale, bring it forward into your pigeon position, whatever that looks like. Shin can be parallel to the mat or it can be diagonal. Prop up as much as you need to. You can keep a block underneath your hips. You can sit on a bolster. You can keep a bolster in front of you. Let's take a moment here and really get settled. This is also part of the practice and it's something we should honor and not just skip through or hurry through in order to get to the final pose. But actually be mindful here and enjoy this as well as you settle in to prepare for your pigeon pose. So it's a little moment, the moments between the inhale and the exhale and the transitions in yoga and those are the moments that make up our lives. So 
we shouldn't just rush through them, right? And we rush through our whole life. Once you've found a position that feels challenging yet okay, <laughs> you can stay up here or perhaps you come down onto your forearms. You can place a block underneath your forehead if you want to rest your head down or you can rest your head down onto the mat. Find your position here and we'll stay for 10 deep breaths. Can you just be with yourself here? Be in this moment on your mat. Watch your mind. Notice any physical sensations. And see what emotions come up for you here. Two more deep breaths. Be here fully for these last two. Don't just wait for it to be over. Really be here. Good. Once you're ready, you can make your way up. Hint your fingertips and we'll take a couple of spinal waves here. Or you can stay still if that feels better. your palms down, push into the mat, tuck the back toes, lift that front knee, and press back, Ooh, downward facing dog. <laughs> mm. All the sensations through our hips, right? You can come onto your knees, take a quick child's pose, or you can lay on your back, we'll move into our laying on our back here in just a minute so if child's pose is not comfortable for you you can go ahead and do that right now and just take a moment here to feel into your body and feel into your hips so oftentimes in yoga when we do intense poses like pigeon for example it it affects us physically and uh, spiritually or emotionally. So physically, when we do pigeon, uh, we get into the hip joint, we get into the muscles, and we also get into the fascia and um, some of those um, tissues that we don't usually work into very much. So tendons, ligaments, fascia. And also within our hips, we like I said in the beginning, we tend to store a lot of our emotions. And so when we hold these poses, it's very normal to cry or just feel a lot of anger or frustration or whatever we've been holding on to. And so once you let that go, you can actually feel it in your physical body. You feel this tingling. You feel this kind of radiating, um, a buzzing almost. So just notice that and just... See how that feels and where it is and <clears throat> just noticing. When you're ready, you can make your way up to the tabletop and then just sit down onto your side and let's come onto our backs. So we'll take a Shavasana here. You're you can keep your legs bent, knees knocking together. It's a very restorative version, especially for your low back. Or you can straighten your legs, let them be about mat width, and just let the feet splay out. Arms come by your side, palms face up. You can close down your eyes here. Take a deep breath in through the nose. And exhale through the mouth. Let everything go here. 
Leave everything on your mat. Let your body melt into the floor beneath you. Just notice the effects of today's practice in your body and in your mind. Notice any energy shifts, any physical sensations through your hips. Let your body be really heavy. Completely relax here. Allow yourself to just be. feel ready, you can start wiggling your fingers and toes. Move your feet, maybe some wrist circles. You can take a good morning stretch. Bring your knees into your chest, give yourself a big hug. slowly roll over to one side. Stay here for a moment. And when you're ready, make your way up to a seated position. Hands to heart center. You can keep your eyes closed. Take a moment of gratitude for your body, your practice, and that you showed up for yourself today. Be grateful for the emotions, for this human experience that you are lucky enough to have. Namaste. Thank you so much for practicing with me today, and I hope to see you soon. Bye.